A career in wildlife management can be extremely fulfilling for anyone who loves wildlife and isn't afraid to get a little dirty while earning a living. We recently attended the Oregon Zoo's wild release of captive-raised western palm turtles to learn a bit about what wildlife managers actually do and how to start a career in the field. My name's David Shepherdson. I'm the Deputy Conservation Division Manager at the Oregon Zoo, so I'm responsible for uh, research, scientific research at the zoo, and for our conservation programs. My name is Michelle Shireman. I'm a zookeeper at the Oregon Zoo. Right now I work in the Great Northwest section of the zoo, and um, we grow the western pond turtles for the Head Start program for release. My name is Nicole Stevens, and I'm a wildlife biologist. On this turtle project, I'm doing the annual mark recapture. We basically set up a number of traps. Once we trap them, we um, determine what turtle it is, and then we'll take some measurements. Wildlife management in the U.S. is typically done through the state and federal Fish and Wildlife Services, but it's also done by zoos and aquariums, corporations, and charity groups. The Western Pond Turtle Project was started over 20 years ago by Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo and the Washington Fish and Wildlife Service. The project is now also backed by the Oregon Zoo, the Bonneville Power Administration, and dozens of volunteers and private donors. Yeah, what we're doing here is, is head-starting turtles in the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, this is a there's a population of turtles here that uh, we know numbered about 100 20 years ago when the people from the Woodland Park Zoo discovered them. They discovered that there were a lot of adult turtles, but no juveniles, which implies that none of the juveniles are surviving. And so they came up with this idea of head-starting turtles, that is, taking hatchlings from the wild, bringing them to the zoo, raising them for nine months with a lot of heat and light and, and good food, um, so that they're about the size of a three-year hatchling uh, when they release them. Um, and at that size, they have a much better chance of surviving. So you're head-starting them past the critical period of life when they're most likely to die in the wild. So it's a very effective way of rapidly increasing the population numbers. We, we joined the Woodland Park Zoo in this effort in about 1998. So ever since then, we've been raising turtles at the zoo, releasing them here and other places in the Columbia River Gorge. And we've been successful in raising the numbers from about 100 to well over 1,500 now. We've established two new populations. Uh, so we're pretty close to the recovery goals for this species. We're, we're going to continue head starting for a few more years. Um, but our role is beginning to diminish in this, and the role of habitat restoration and controlling the invasive species is going to be the predominant actions in the future. The western pond turtle once thrived in the millions from Baja, California up into Canada, but in 1991 it was found to be on the brink of extinction in the state of Washington. Biologists determined that disease and overdevelopment of wetlands initially killed off the turtles, and that predation by the American bullfrog is now preventing their recovery. Bullfrogs don't belong on the West Coast. It's believed that settlers from the Southeast who liked the taste of frog legs brought the animals to California during the gold rush. Populations exploded and took over the entire West Coast. Bullfrogs eat baby turtles. Part of what we're doing is bullfrog removal. I ended up um, having to do some of that, so it was going out at night, basically wading around in these ponds, um, spotlighting the frogs and spearing them, and. Uh, so that, you know, wasn't something that I, I thought that I was going to be doing, but, um, but you know, you kind of just get used to it and you just do what you have to do, so. Though the work may be ugly at times, it's extremely rewarding to watch an animal come back from the brink of extinction. So how exactly does one start a career in the field of wildlife management? I actually got my bachelor's degree in zoology at Washington State University. In your summer you do internships and my internship was at the Woodland Park Zoo and when I went there they asked you first off you know what's your favorite animal what do you want to work with and then they put you in something else and it's actually a really good thing looking back at the time I was very upset that I wasn't gonna work with big cats I was gonna work with snakes and birds and monkeys but um, actually sometimes the animals that you like don't necessarily like you and so part of that is just figuring out what works for you and what animals work best with you. When I applied, the Oregon Zoo had over 300 applicants for my job. Uh, when they narrowed it down for the interview process, there were 171 applicants out of over 300 that met the requirements for the job and had enough experience. So um, what I advise people to do is go out and get volunteer experience at zoos, um, do internships, 
Even though it's not paid, um, it'll pay off in the long run. That's how you get on. You have that experience and you've shown that you're going to stick with it. I eventually uh, did do an interview. I flew out here and there were seven of us that interviewed for the job. And yeah, I got the job. So I've been here 15 years now. I got into this. I'm an animal behaviorist by training. I have a PhD in animal behavior. I studied badgers in England for, for four years, a long time ago. Um, I, I got into this through that. I mean, the reason I studied animal behavior is because uh, I've just been fascinated by animals and pets and animal behavior for you know, my whole life. So I just followed my interests. Um, ended up doing a PhD in animal behavior, looking for a job. Finding a job um, as an animal behaviorist is not that easy. Um, but I was lucky enough to find a job at the London Zoo in England in, um, the, in the late 90s. I went to school at Oregon State University. Um, I was in the zoology program. But then I had a couple of really good friends that were in the fish and wildlife program. And so I kind of learned about working with wildlife and all the field work opportunities that were out there and the travel and working on these projects really appealed to me. So about six months after I graduated, I started my first position. Um, I was a bird banding intern. Ever since then, I've kind of just applied for these seasonal positions all over and um, just enjoyed the travel and um, meeting new people and getting to see new parts of the country. If you're interested in wildlife management, a degree in biology or zoology can work just fine. But if you really want to stand out in the crowd, go for a specific degree in environmental science, natural resource management, or fish and wildlife. These programs are now open on campus and online at Oregon State University. During and after college, volunteer work, temp jobs, and internships are also key to your success in this competitive field. The catch-22, of course, is that you, you always need to have experience to get these jobs. And, um, you know, getting, getting the experience before you have the job is, is the challenge. So any opportunities you have to get experience, um, unpaid or paid, uh, is extremely worthwhile. I'm John Perry, and this has been Careers in Action, Wildlife Management.